Despite an unprecedented global pandemic, more single-family homes were sold last year in Massachusetts than in any other year since 2004. But how is this happening, and in what other ways has the world of real estate been impacted? Julie invited licensed real estate agent Leon Lopes via Zoom to discuss why it's a seller's market and how the world of real estate has been impacted both in the Plymouth area and beyond. Julie? Welcome, Leon Lopes. So good to have you today. Thank you. It's great to be here, Julie. Now, real estate. You have been in the real estate business. You're now in your 26th year of being a real estate agent. So you have seen many, many things. It seems to me now the, the housing market is the wild, wild west. The old rules seem to be thrown out the window. Uh, p houses are selling within moments of when they go on the market. Can you talk about how this strange phenomenon has come to be and if you've ever seen it before? Well, first of all, the last part first, I've never seen it like this in terms of how low the inventory is. Just a couple of quick numbers to put it in perspective. Uh, in Duxbury, for example, the inventory today for sale is over 60% lower than it was a year ago. In Kingston and Plymouth, it's over 70% lower. And in Pembroke, it's over 90% lower than it was a year ago. So the, you know, the inventory levels are just uh, unheard of right now. Now, what do you attribute that to? Why, why is there so few, why are there so few houses on the market? I think part of it, um, it's really been uh, a situation that's been happening over the last four or five years. The inventory has slowly been dropping prior to the pandemic uh, probably every year for the last few years. But then when you fold in, you know, all of the circumstances that we've been dealing with over the last year, uh, maybe some home sellers or homeowners that might have thought of selling, um, they're concerned about their job or they're homeschooling their kids right now and they, you know, they just don't want to move. Or they're concerned about, gee, I heard the inventory is so low, where are we going to go if we sell? So it's just been the snowball effect for all these different reasons, um, creating this, you know, record low inventory situation that we're in right now. So at the same time, the interest rates to buy a home are at all time low. It's, it's incredible how low the rates are, both fixed and variable. How does that play into this? It is. Yeah, that, that's something else that um, no one would have predicted, including the uh, national experts uh, with 30-year interest rates below 3%. Uh, that's kind of the saving grace for the buyers right now. Even though prices have gone up significantly and double-digit increase in the last year, um, the, the interest rates being as low as they are is probably the primary thing that's allowing buyers to still take that leap into home ownership. Uh, in addition, I think especially over the last year, uh, buyers that have been kind of preparing themselves and saving up and so forth, um, you know, just because they haven't been able to spend money on uh, concerts and shows and things like that uh, in the past year, they've been saving more money. So they have been uh, positioning themselves uh, to buy, but now it's just the struggle of finding the inventory and uh, and getting the winning offer. So speaking of inventory, uh, how does that play into the new developments, whether it's housing or condos? Are they at a lower rate also of, of what we're used to seeing, a new development coming up here or there or a new condo um, association being put, put up? I don't see as many of those happening. Is that also affecting this? Um, I, I think it is in a, for a couple different reasons. One, because the, the cost of land is also rising along with everything else. So the developers really need to run their numbers and, and you know, have a good handle on, on um, what the costs are in order to create these developments, large or small. In addition to that, the cost of materials um, lumber and, and all the other materials that go into building today, these costs have also risen. So it's a, it's a challenge for the builders and developers as well. And of course, the 
you know, the end result is the, the, the price of the, of the brand new home goes up. Now, what about the phenomenal we're seeing where more and more people are working from home um, and they're not sure if they're going to return to their offices wherever they may have been when the pandemic is over and when we get, quote, back to normal? How does that play into people renovating their homes or maybe putting additions on their homes? How does that affect the real estate market? I guess the, the best answer to that question is it depends. So, you know, you might have some homeowners that already have the space within their home, um, allowing them to decide to maybe just renovate. You know, we, we wanted to buy a new home in order to get a new kitchen, but you know what? We've got all the space that we need right here, so let's spend the money on a new kitchen. Other homeowners, um, maybe because of work from home scenarios, especially if it's two people working from home, if they don't have the space in their current home to have two rooms as a home office, uh, then those folks may choose to put an addition on their home, or they may be some of the people that are choosing to sell right now. And again, getting back to your point, it's great to be able to sell, and you can sell in a minute, you can sell over what you actually uh, priced it at, but do you have anywhere to go? And, and how is you, as a real estate agent, how are you helping people find these places that are clearly there's not many out there? Right. It, it's interesting. Lately, um, a number of my clients have chosen to sell and move out of state. Um, some of my clients have chosen to sell and downsize. So they've um, they've looked at some of the new construction opportunities that are still out there. Um, but the bottom line is when a seller is concerned about, gee, I'd love to sell, but where am I going to go? We just have to build that into the equation and remind them that nobody's going to throw you out of your current home. If you put your home on the market and you get a buyer within a day or two, then we have to negotiate with that buyer to allow the home seller some extra time to find a home. Some people are choosing to put their stuff in storage and find a place to rent. There's some um, apartment communities in the area that are allowing uh, six month rentals, for example. So some people are choosing to do that and get the selling part over with, then they can breathe and, and be well positioned when the right home that they wanna buy comes up. Okay, and my last question is about the first time home buyer. Uh, what advice do you have for them? Now, they clearly have nothing to sell. Um, they they are often are pre-approved, and I, I assume that you would recommend that all first-time home buyers get pre-approved for a mortgage at a certain rate or a certain amount that they can spend. Are they factoring into this uh, equation of, of the low inventory, or are they just simply being outpriced? Uh, combination of both, I think, unfortunately. A lot of first-time buyers are being outpriced. Um, again, the, the numbers vary depending on the towns. You know, in the South Shore, for example, uh, you can still get a little bit more house for your money in Plymouth or Wareham or maybe Carver uh, compared to some of the towns uh, along the South Shore that are north of those towns. So getting priced out or getting, um, getting beat by, you know, multiple offers is probably the biggest challenge for first-time home buyers. Um, but again, when a first-time home buyer is ready to make an offer, trying to position themselves in, in as many different ways as possible, such as being flexible on the closing date, allowing the homeowner extra time to decide whether or not they want to find a new home or go to rent someplace. Um, you know, as many different uh, pieces of the offer um, that, that a buyer is going to present that are going to be a positive piece for the home seller. Those are all important things. So when we sit down with the first time home buyers and have that consultation, we try to think of as many different scenarios as possible and what might work best to get the home seller to choose their offer. Okay.
So it's a really complicated uh, situation all, all the way around. Uh, people should just keep up on um, the listings. They should pick a broker, a uh, real estate agent that they can trust that has their best interests. And there's, I know there's lots of them around. And, and um, we certainly don't have a shortage of real estate agents in our communities, which is wonderful. Um, but what is your final word on advice for people right now in this market trying to make a decision, do I sell, do I buy? What would be the, the determining factor? Well, I, I think uh, right now we're definitely at a high point within the cycle of the real estate market. The last time we were at a high point like this was probably 2005 and six, um, before the, you know, the big crash in 2008 through 10 or 11. So, for a home seller, my biggest advice right now is, you know, if, if you're downsizing, especially, this is an awesome time to sell. Nobody knows for sure how long these prices are going to stay where they are. So get your home ready to sell, declutter, um, staging, all of these things are totally important today, even in this kind of a market. For the home buyer, I think the biggest thing for the buyer to keep in mind is, again, the interest rates are so low right now that it still makes it very possible for buyers at all segments of the market to successfully be able to buy the home that they want to buy right now. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You've given us a lot of information. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Back to you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Julie and Leon. To learn more about Leon Lopes and Remax Spectrum, visit leonlopes.com.